television. Much of our future depends on the way we use this medium of communication, for its influence on thinking and action is tremendous. Suppose we were privileged to enter the inner sanctum of a television station. Here in the control room sit the men who, at the touch of a button, control the picture going to our homes, where we, at the touch of a button, select from a variety of programs, news stories, entertainment, Education, sports, and advertising. For in a few short years, television has become one of the greatest merchandising media. How is all this done? What causes this almost instantaneous transmission of sight and sound. It is an electron beam which paints the picture off. Let's look at one of these receiver tubes and find out how television works. This is known as a cathode ray tube because under high voltage electricity, the cathode gives off a beam or ray of electrons. You might call this an electron gun, which shoots a stream of tiny negative particles at the face of the tube. The fluorescent coating on the face glows where the electron beam strikes it. Now, let's look into a T-camera. Through one of its lenses, an image is formed, not on film, but on another tube. A tube which costs more than a thousand dollars. This type is called the image orthicon tube. In it is another electron gun which sends out a steady stream of electrons. Now, this target is made so as to pick up a series of electrical charges. When the lens forms an image on the sensitive plate, and these charges vary the magnitude of the returning electron beam. To understand this, let's imagine that we want to televise a single dot, not a white dot, not a black dot, but something in between. In the camera tube, the lens forms an image of the dot on the plate, setting up a charge on the target. According to the brightness of the image, the electron beam is changed when it returns from the target. This changed beam is amplified and sent out by the tube. In the television transmitter, this picture signal is amplified and combined with a very high frequency carrier wave. The carrier wave, with the fluctuation caused by the image of the gray dot, goes to the transmitter antenna and is radiated from the top of the tower. The receiver antenna picks up the wave and sends it down the lead-in wires to the receiver. Here, the signal controls the electron beam so that it strikes the fluorescent face just hard enough to make a gray dot on the receiver screen. Thus, the basis of television is an image of light which controls electricity which regulates transmitter waves, which again control electricity, and finally is turned back into light. 
But television is more than a gray dot. It's a whole picture. And it moves. To understand how television makes pictures that move, think of this. When you read a book, you don't read the whole page at once. You read a little bit at a time, swinging your eye across line after line. In the TV camera tube, the beam of electrons can do much the same. Electrons are affected by magnetic fields of deflecting coils. These coils make the electron beam sweep back and forth across the target. These coils make the beam swing up and down. Together, they swing the beam across one line, then back to cross another, lower down, and still another, lower. Thus, in effect, the beam looks at each point of the picture, and it varies according to the brightness of each point. The movement of the beam in the camera is accurately timed in the TV transmitter by a sync generator, which generates synchronizing pulses. These pulses are also sent out over the air as part of the video signal. In your receiver, these pulses synchronize the sweep of the electron beam to the station being received. And as the beam sweeps back and forth, line after line, the strength of the beam keeps changing modulated by the video signal. Where the beam is strong, the tube glows brightly. Where it's weak, the tube remains dark. Thus the camera and the receivers watching it are electronically linked together. And the signal from each point in the camera tube is transmitted and turned into a picture of the same point on the receiver tube. So, on your receiver tube, pictures are painted by an invisible beam darting back and forth at speeds thousands of miles per hour. In the most common forms of television, the beam scans every other line, then goes back to fill in. This is called interlace scanning. With 60 interlaced pictures per second, or 30 full pictures per second, it assures a steady image with no flicker. And because your eye has a persistence of vision, this series of pictures gives the illusion of motion. Add sound through FM radio and you have television. In today's airwaves, television occupies the very high and ultra high frequencies. These waves cannot normally be received beyond the horizon. So the area of TV reception is limited. Television transmitters are linked, sometimes by coaxial cable, a special wire and tube arrangement to carry TV signals, and sometimes by relay stations. Located usually on high ground, they receive a signal through one of the horn-shaped antennas, boost it stronger, and transmit it on to the next station. Thus, television is sent from coast to coast. Images picked up by cameras and turned into radio wave signals which tell a fleeting invisible beam how to paint moving pictures in your home. Wouldn't you like to know more about television, the cameras, the lights, the production techniques? For those who understand television, there are many vocational opportunities. Let this be only the beginning of your study of television.